Welcome to the May 17th Board of Selectmen's meeting. If you please stand and join us for the Pledge of the Flag. is being audio and video recorded. Um, the first item on the agenda is the Old Colony Planning Council on vote to accept the ADA self-evaluation and transition plan. How are you? Good. development planner with the um, Old Colony Planning Council, which is the regional planning agency. And we worked with the town, um, specifically the ADA committee, to do an ADA self-evaluation and transition plan. So I'm not sure if you know, are familiar with those, but um, for the Mass Office on uh, Disability, they have this opportunity to do an ADA transition plan. Communities with over 50 employees are supposed to do that. Um, and have that on file. You can't really qualify for any grants unless you have that, so that was kind of the, the idea that prompted this. Um, so basically, um, I've just got a quick little PowerPoint here, is uh, what is the ADA? The Americans with Disability Act became law in 1990, and it's a civil rights law that pro pro prohibits discrimination against individuals with disabilities. Um, the law guarantees equal opportunity for individuals with disabilities in public accommodations and employment, transportation, state and local government services, and, and um, telecommunications. So um, what does it mean to West Bridgewater? This applies uh, to West Bridgewater because communities with more than 50 employees that receive federal funding must have this. And it applies to programs and activities, um, and also your buildings and public spaces for access. So, um, so to start the, the first step is to start the implementation, appoint an ADA coordinator, and um, West Bridgewater has appointed Marcy as the ADA coordinator, um, provide public notice, adopt a grievance procedure, conduct a self-evaluation, develop a transition plan, create an action plan. And this plan was funded by a grant from the Mass Office on Disability which was great um, that you uh, drafted this grant application. So we worked with the committee um, and your open space and recreation chair, uh, the ADA coordinator, planning and DPW staff, and we had a nine-year-old student, which was really exciting, um, to come in and take a look at your public spaces and your municipal buildings. There's a checklist that you go through um, to take a look at signage, doors, bathrooms, all kinds of accessibility. And um, I will say that bringing a, a child to look at that through the, their lens, I think he wanted my job because <laughs> every place we went, I would say, you know, what do you think about this? And he would say, well, those aren't the right kind of doorknobs that you're supposed to have. So young people really see these things. And once you see them, you can't unsee them. So um, it really speaks to the commitment on the town of really caring about making your public spaces accessible. So we did 12 municipal buildings, 24 open spaces that included the athletic fields, playgrounds, canoe landings, landmarks, and open space trails and nature areas. And also took a look at your website and um, public meeting accessibility. So um, the next steps are to pr we presented to the ADA committee, and we got some feedback and edits for that. I have those in a draft form, and after you review it, if you have any changes or comments, I'll add those, I'll accept all the edits, and then I'll give you a nicely printed bound copy and an electronic version. Uh, the town has to submit the report to the Mass Office on Disability before June 30th, and after the report is submitted and accepted, you'll be eligible to apply for grant funding to remediate some of the non-compliance. Um, and then the, the last page of the slide has some important dates. So to uh, these are dates um, based on last year's fiscal year, but I put them up just to make awareness of they're generally available in August for the application. Um, September 30th, they're due. October, the review starts, and then you usually get notified in December 
um, I mean, in the November time, November December time frame, if you've gotten the grant award. And I talked with Deborah, uh, the chair of the ADA committee, to talk a little bit about um, what the best ways to submit grants. So I probably should have said it. I am the chair of the select board in Easton, so we've done this in our town, and I work closely with the commission there. Um, we've learned that they don't like you to request one big grant of 250000 They like you to chop it up and submit maybe three ideas because they try to make sure that everybody gets something. And sometimes if they don't have enough money, they'll pick a bunch of smaller grants versus the big ones. So uh, just some little tips like that that we shared. And um, once, once you get that, then you can start working on them. So, you know, I, I have to say I was really surprised because with some of the older buildings, particularly the town hall, um, there was really very, very little, some, some small things, um, you know, the signage, there's a couple of places to change that, but really overall the town has done a pretty good job in all of their buildings um, to make sure that they are accessible. And um, probably the one that was the most challenging was the older element and elementary school, the Rose McDonald School. So there's um, some things there in, in the older schools as every town has. It's, it's and one thing that I wanted to really make clear is that when we went to some of the places and we talked to, you know, um, the commission on just on um, a council on aging when we were there, or the fire chief or the police chief. This isn't a criticism or anything like that. It's just to identify the areas so that then they can be improved. And this basically gives you a list of um, things that, that could be better. And then I kind of put a little bit of my own flair in there and put some ideas and suggestions. Um, not necessarily that you have to do them for compliance, but just some things that I've seen other communities do. And I also included the census data to show what it looks like in, in West Bridgewater. Um, for how many people and what type of disabilities and what age groups and things like that because I think it kind of helps tell the story. So um, I, you know, I thought that there was an electronic copy that went out, so my apologies that you're seeing that for the first time. But if you have any comments or updates or anything like that and you want to get them back to me, um, my Deborah has my email and we'll get that done and back up to you. Great, thank you. Just okay. great work. Um, does anyone have any questions? No, well, I appreciate the review. Well, it was a real pleasure to work here. And uh, if anybody needs me to take them on a tour of West Bridgewater, I know how to get <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> and um, I really enjoyed working with the committees. Everybody's so passionate about this. And, you know, I think that that stems from uh, the town administrator's office through the select board and to your boards and committees and the people in this community should be very happy that you care about uh, everybody and their access to be able to um, to be able to enjoy all the amenities that the town has. Did a great job. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank okay. you. And, and I just want to add, I just want to say thank you in return. Because, um, you know, we are fortunate. Deb and Marcy and the rest of the committee really care and want to do the right thing, but we couldn't have done it without you. So um, so again, thank you for all of your help and assistance. Thanks so much. A lot of progress. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in honor of our veterans and our Purple Heart recipients, uh, West Bridgewater has elected to become a Purple Heart community. Um, Denise is, has a um, proclamation. Town of West Bridgewater Proclamation, Purple Heart Community. Whereas the people of West Bridgewater have great admiration and the utmost gratitude for all of the citizens of our community who have selflessly served in the armed forces. That has been vital in maintaining the freedom and the way of life enjoyed by our citizens. And whereas citizens of our community have been killed in action while serving in the armed forces and have been posthumously awarded the Purple Heart for their ultimate sacrifice. And whereas citizens of our community have been awarded the Purple Heart for their bodily sacrifice of being wounded by the hand of the enemy while engaged in combat 
And whereas the Purple Heart is the oldest American military decoration and was created as the badge of military merit, made of purple cloth in the shape of a heart with the word merit sewn upon it. On August 7, 1782, in Newburgh, New York, by the General George Washington, then reestablished as the Purple Heart on February 22, 1932, by General Douglas MacArthur. And whereas the heritage it represents is sacred to those who know the price paid to wear the Purple Heart, and whereas August 7th is nationally recognized as Purple Heart Day, and now therefore be it proclaimed, we, the West Bridgewater Board of Selectmen, hereby proclaim West Bridgewater Mass, a Purple Heart community, honoring the service and sacrifice of those from our community who were awarded the Purple Heart while serving in our nation's war wars. And whereas the town of West Bridgewater will probably place Purple Heart community signs at the main through ways to our town and also be it proclaimed that West Bridgewater will recognize August 7th annually as Purple Heart Day and urge our citizens and organizations to display the American flag as well as other public expressions of recognition and appreciation of our Purple Heart recipients. Anthony Kinahan, Denise Rays, Jeff Ryan, Board of Selectmen. Thanks, Denise. Um, our veterans agent is here who you know, works to make sure that um, veterans in town are provided the benefits that they deserve. Um, Paul, I don't know if you wanted to add anything or if you're. I'd just like to add, I'd like to thank Dave. I'd like to thank you people for having us here. I'd like to, this is the man right here that put this together along with Andy, our group. Uh, I think it's just wonderful. Um, We'll be the first out of the Bridgewaters. Bridgewater and East Bridgewater don't have it. Whitman don't have it. Rainham and Easton have it. Brockton don't have it. So I just think it's a feather in our cap to be Purple Heart community. And I, I just can't thank you people enough. And of course, we have a recipient right here that uh, is, has a Purple Heart. So it's just, I think it's wonderful. Yeah. And I can't thank yous enough. Well, I think the thank yous go the other way. Absolutely. Could so we thank you take all. a break and maybe take a picture um, awarding this Is to Is there a motion for a brief recess? Yes, please. Motion. Second. All fair. Aye. Aye. We're now Back into open session. Um, up next is we have proclamations um, to vote on and approve um, for three Eagle Scouts um, yeah. Jack Campbell, Evan Capriellian, and Tim Churchill. Um, if there's a motion to approve those uh, proclamations and they'll be presented if it's this weekend or at some point Sunday in the future. Sunday at 1 o'clock. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, um, we have site plan review for 15 Maple Street, uh, pro proposed contractor's yard. David, do you want to briefly? Sure, you know, if there's, if there's anywhere a contractor's yard belongs, this is where it is. So it's just a traditional contractor's yard. Um, if you want to scroll over to the Google picture, that might be most of it right here. Um, and so you'll go all the way down to the end of Pleasant Street. Pleasant Street ends and it goes to Maple Street if you were to take a left. Um, it would head towards Route 24, that's where the current marijuana facility is. You take a right-hand turn, uh, there's a whole bunch of vegetation and developed space, and you'll see where 15 Maple is. That has always historically been a residential home. The people who are developing this have purchased the home. They're going to convert the home into a business space, uh, office space, and then they will add a garage, about 3,000 square feet for storage, and to be able to, you know, house whatever they need to. Um, and then there <coughs> the idea is, is for them to take other waste such as asphalt and, and brick and masonry type stuff and crunch it up and put it, make it convert it or recycle it into uh, either fill and or mulch. So again, good spot for it. Um, it's in the industrial zone. The only concern from the business department, from the building department, is just to make sure that the home, because it is there, uh, we do not allow mixed use in our industrial area. 
So Mike's only contention or concern to the ZBA is to make sure they put the restriction that somebody can't live in that home. You know, that's not the intent, but we should spell it out just to make sure it's clear. Okay. Um, is there a motion to pass along the recommendation for approval? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 David, if you just want to touch on 34 South Street. Yep, so uh, this is a traditional residential home on South Street. Um, and what they're looking to do is they're looking to add a uh, family daycare. Our bylaw allows no more than six. According to their permit, they're looking to probably add five. Uh, and if you want to go one more, I think you'll see if that's the picture of the house. It will be downstairs. From everything that I can tell, uh, it's, it appears that everything qualifies. The people that live there, the lady is a school teacher and she's also certified, so she's done everything right. So it looks like they'll comply with all the all the appropriate items. And so again, we'll go before the, the uh, ZBA. Um, thanks, David. Does anyone have any comments or would like to make a recommendation that the ZBA approves? So I definitely recommend that the ZBA approve it. I think this is a, a great home business. So. Unless Jeff has any comments, recommendations, I'd make a motion. No, I'm, to I'm good with this. Make to sure recommend it. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, over the past few months, maybe longer, we've talked about um, utilizing the ARPA funds um, for a water treatment facility. Um, this is just um, signing the ARPA agreement. Um, is there a motion to essentially sign um, the agreement? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes of April 5th and April 19th? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And a motion to accept for review the meeting minutes of May 3rd? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is there anyone from the public who would like to address the board? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> so we continue to receive our local aid cherry sheets. The uh, first to the right column is now the Senate version uh, that was released last week. For the most part, pretty similar. A couple of numbers a little higher, a couple of numbers a little bit lower, but nothing that is going to be um, advantageous or or uh, negatively impacted to the town. So. Uh, everything is good, just keeping you up to date on that. I did speak to Senator Timothy earlier. The Senate will be in version voting on the budget and amendments next week. As you know, there was a budget shortfall in receipts last month in the month of April. I think that's been, been well televised and articulated. They do not expect that they will have a lot of money for special amendments as they've done in the past. Um, and so I asked him, since we're not going to have millions of dollars, we had prioritized uh, trying to get more funding for a water treatment plant but that type of money is not going to be in the card. So if it's only going to be a small amount of money, I asked him if we could do a water treatment plant, great, but if not, then our next top priority is money for sidewalks. So you know, we'll, we'll see how that process unfolds. Um, next on the agenda is a letter from Concerned Citizens. Um, I think everybody is aware uh, on the board at this point that there was a mic that was still on during town meeting. Um, and so, um, so residents at this point, I've received 56 emails um, that have been um, aggregated towards a third party um, site uh, from concerned citizens in reference to that night. They asked me as part of the email is to make sure they disseminated the information to make sure that the selectmen, the, that the moderator and the finance committee all received it. Um, unbeknownst to me, all three of you were individually copied as well, but I couldn't tell that. Um, and so. Um, I am just making sure that instead of sending out 56 individual emails to everybody, um, I am acknowledging receipt that I did receive in the letters uh, and that I also am making sure that the board is aware. I've already spoken to the moderator and I've already passed along to the chair of the finance committee and she has passed it along as well to the committee. Thanks, David. Um, that's it for the town administrator's report. Um, oh, so I'm, yeah. I'm so sorry. One other thing I want to add. Um, I this just came in, um, and I, I know you both want to speak, but Public Safety Day um, will be on June 4th. We don't have a meeting between now and then, and I literally just received it, so I want to make sure that the board was aware of it and that it's everybody in town will post in all the appropriate places, but you'll see it's Sunday, June 4th, 
Uh, again, really good cheap job to both Chief Tebow and Chief Flaherty. Um, Sergeant uh, Regan, um, they just really do a nice job putting this together. It's a great day. I mean, if you've got, if you've never been, please it's go. Kid, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot. Um, and, um, and they do a fantastic job and showcase everything that the taxpayer actually contributes to to make sure that we have the best police and fire departments that we can have. It also coincides with the river walk, right? Entirely correct. That's a good point. I'm entirely correct. So and I do have some comments regarding the 54 emails we received. Um, I, I would appreciate if you could give me maybe a minute and a half, two minutes tops, just to, to read some thoughts because I did read, um, they were pretty much the same email over and over again. There may have been three or four that were different and I, I'll take the time to further look at them, but in response to the email, some of my thoughts are this. First of all, uh, regarding the FinCom comments or comments made by some members of the FinCom meeting at town meeting, I, I could not hear the full sentences. And regardless, I do not believe that the utterances equate to any type of inherent decisions. I think they were just that, utterances. Um, I too was discouraged that the article was moved forward. Uh, town meeting occurs once, maybe twice a year. And if any article was primed to be advanced, it should have been the water article. The water in this town affects everyone. And given our water issues and the $4 million article sitting there, I think it deserved everyone's attention. I agree that having a diverse composition on finance committee is important because they must focus on the entire town. Their recommendations must not be short-sighted or emotional and must be considerate of the entire town and its future financial stability. The school department does have a place in the budget, but it cannot expect to be top priority year to year. Police and fire are charged with the responsibility of being able to, uh, sorry, being available to all who live, work, and travel through West Bridgewater. Compromise is a result of give and take. It is inevitable that neither party walks away 100% pleased, but everyone should appreciate that we all answer to the taxpayers, every board, every committee. Although I voted in favor of the budget compromise, I still felt it was important to inform town meeting of the statistic, statistics and financial forecasts. As I did so, I was met with cold glares, angry head shaking, and quite audible expressions of disagreement. I believe that had there been a hot mic in the audience, I would have been even more offended. The school budget is fully funded. The school committee worked diligently to create a budget to fulfill all needs. I believe it is time to move forward, and I hope we meet periodically with school committee to learn of their progress and financial forecasts. Thank you. I have a, just a couple of thoughts. Um, <clears throat> first is the thought of individually responding to 53 emails and then getting responses back and forth is, is not um, good use of, I think, anybody's time or, or certainly the time I have. Um, I am not opposed um, to offering a date, um, and emailing it to this group of people um, that are obviously concerned and having a discussion in person. Um, where I think it can, we can communicate or I can communicate more clearly my point of view um, and where I'm at and why I don't agree with everything that is in um, in this letter, um, which is what I want. I, I want to have an open discussion, but I, again, I can't do it and respond back you know, to 53 responses to, to emails that way. It's just not practical. Um, but I'm not opposed and, and honestly would, would like to either either alone or, or part of the board, however you guys would want to do it, um, to open some facility, invite people in um, that are concerned that, you know, that have emailed or that are concerned and talk a little bit more about this because it, I feel like there's a, there's a significant disconnect here um, between what I've seen from the finance committee sitting here and what's being what's being said in that uh, in that letter. So um, those are my thoughts on this. I don't know. 
I, I won't be responding to, to the emails because it's it's pretty much like I said except for a few the same demands over and over again so my intent is to post the letter along with this meeting and I, I really hope at this point because I think the the foundation of the issues are between finance I'm sorry not finance committee but uh, school committee finance committee and us and that finance committee really they have to respond on their own I've, I've known Mo and Jan for a long time I really do not believe there was any ill will and I think their their heart and minds are in the right place mm -hmm. I, I think the composition of that board shows diversity um, as well as that they can work together they may not always agree but that that's a good thing that you see sometimes their votes are, are different that shows they have a diverse board so I, like I said I plan to post a letter post this meeting online I, I've made my comments and I, I just feel like at least for me um, it's time to move on and that I hope the school committee and us can work better together even if we don't always agree at least work better together yeah I mean the the part addressed to our board I think we're already doing I mean their demand um, we've always worked diligently with the school and we have a plan going forward to, to work with the school that um, was talked about with their chair I mean I'm I know that our board didn't do anything inappropriate by any means we didn't all agree on the budget I was the one who voted against fully funding it um, the entire way um, but I'm you know I still stand behind my vote um, I think it was reasonable fair and what I thought was best for the entire town and I have no issue saying that um, and I look forward to working with the school committee I mean I don't I don't really see much need to to do more than that I mean that's our job that's what we're doing that's what we're gonna continue to do um, I support the members of the finance committee I was served with them um, a few years ago and mm -hmm. I mean I working with them I know um, their motives and that they're you know true to the committee and, and do a good job and um, sometimes there's frustration yeah we all feel it but I have complete confidence in them um, I personally don't feel the need for you know a, a group meeting like that community style meeting mm -hmm. um, I mean I'm not you're obviously more than welcome to do it if, if you'd like but um, yep. no, I like respect you. your opinions and I don't know, you think about it a tiny bit more here but. all right um, anything else on this no Nope. All right. Um, with nothing further, I would entertain a motion to enter into executive session, not to return to open session, for purposes of conducting a strategy session in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel, specifically the town administrator, and to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, specifically the clerical union and the police union. Since, in my opinion, as chair, strategizing in open session would have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the town. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Um, and a roll call vote. Raise yes. Ryan yes. Kenny yes. We're now in executive session.